Hello and welcome to Marina News and Views. I am Devashish Pas. Last Thursday, speaking at a press conference, the chairperson of the Securities and Exchange Board of India, Madhavi Puri Butch, expressed concerns over massive speculative volumes in derivatives trading, that is, in futures and options. Trading volumes in derivatives have indeed exploded, mainly in stock options over the last few years, leading to fears of speculative excess. Nitin Kamath, founder of stockbroking firm Zero, has said on X, that's a social media platform, we are in the middle of a period of excess in options trade. Volumes in index options have gone up from 4.6 lakh crore in 2018 to 138 lakh crore in 2024. And more importantly, the share of retail has gone up from just 2% to 41%. Unfortunately, Sebi's concerns seem rather late and also misdirected. And here is why. Now, Sebi is worried that a lot of options trading is only speculative in nature and not in the nature of hedging. Sebi is right about this, but on a lighter note, it reminded me of something that a third generation Gujarati stockbroker told me some 25 years ago at a meeting with brokers in the 1970s, a finance ministry official complained there was just too much of speculation on the Bombay Stock Exchange. One of those present muttered in Gujarati, market ma satto na thai, to suit hai, which means if not speculation, what on earth should happen on the stock market? Sebi is also concerned about the absence of a link between the cash market and the FNO market. But the majority of options traders have never traded options to take or give delivery. In fact, I could not find data for how many options contracts result in physical delivery, but the amount is likely to be absolutely minuscule. If an option trade does not result, does result in delivery, it would be incidental, perhaps an oversight by the trader, but not part of any hedging strategy. This has been the case ever since stock options were introduced. For index options, delivery anyway is irrelevant. Ms. Butch also said from a larger macroeconomic perspective, a large amount of money is going from household savings into what is essentially not productive activity. This is speculative activity. The money is not going into any capital formation in the economy, she said. This is indeed true, but stock trading, whether in cash or derivatives, by itself has never been a productive activity anywhere in the world, right, since the first stock market was set up in Amsterdam in 1602. From the macroeconomic standpoint, stock trading in the secondary market is a necessary evil to allow the primary market to function. It is the primary market that channels savings into enterprises, but it cannot survive on its own. It needs a secondary market to create confidence among the primary market participants about adequate trading liquidity that will allow them to exit when they want to. This confidence is important so that enterprises can keep attracting savings through a newer equity issues. Incidentally, Commodity markets do not even perform the function of channeling savings to enterprises, nor is it creating, offering serious hedging to manufacturers or farmers. That's pure, pure speculation. Now, if there are serious concerns about extreme speculation in derivatives, derivatives, how has this excess come about? After all, options were introduced by stock exchanges under SEBI's approval. Exchanges are now for-profit entities, but SEBI has complete control and ultimate control over all aspects of market, including approving the appointments of heads of exchanges and key management personnel. Under a SEBI mandate, when traders logs in onto a trading portal, they're forced to read a pop-up of a SEBI study that says nine out of 10 individual traders in the equity futures and option segment incurred net losses. Over and above the trading losses incurred, loss makers spend an additional 28% of net trading losses as transaction costs. Those making tra net trading profits incurred between 15 to 50% of such profits as transaction costs. Now, if transaction costs are such a big problem, who is on the other side of these costs? Five entities, brokers, they charge brokerage fees, exchanges, they charge exchange fees, then there are SEBI fees, which is charged by SEBI, state government which charges stamp duty and the central government which charges securities and a transaction tax are these entities prepared to forego the bumper revenues they earn in order to reduce speculation indeed there is lack of clarity even among policymakers how to tax derivatives income 
derivatives are indeed speculative products and Ms. Booch has pointed out how badly speculative products they are. But strangely, gains from derivatives trading is not treated as speculative income, but as business income for income tax purposes. There was a difference in views when derivatives were first introduced. In 2001, the doyen of modern capital markets, Dr. Arish Patil, said in a speech, the original plan of bringing futures to the country in place of badla was to introduce index futures, index options, and stock options. The SEBI committee that went into the whole issue of equity-based futures was not in favor of stock futures. In most of the countries, wherever equity futures are traded, the individual stock futures either do not find a place or even if they're grudgingly allowed, not much trade takes place in them. But Dr. Patel's views were discarded and speculation took off. The second big boost to speculation came when SEBI allowed exchanges to introduce weekly expiries in 2019. The fact is, SEBI had no problem with derivatives until trading exploded post-COVID. But now, having built a dangerous road from which different entities, mainly the government, are extracting a heavy toll, SEBI is concerned that people are driving on it in much greater numbers. While SEBI has set up a committee to examine the whole issue, if it is really interested in saving speculators from themselves, it could start by scrapping in weekly options to start with and then move on to the other things like stock futures, which was never meant to be. If you liked watching this, please do share and do subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.